According to the most recent report by the World Health Organization, malaria took almost 900,000 lives in 2006, the majority of them in Africa. Pesticide Action Network, an international network of NGOs spread over five continents, is very concerned at the high toll taken by the disease. We are very concerned about the catastrophic public health strategies that malaria represents for Africa, but also for the other regions. And we are very aware of the deep burden that malaria is for the continent. Uh, malaria needs to be our first priority. Pesticide Action Network applauds the increased funding and attention that malaria has received in recent years, especially the commitment by the U.S. to fight malaria in Africa. A wide variety of effective malaria control strategies exist and more are in the pipeline. We urge USAID and other funders to advocate sustainable, systems-based solutions in their malaria aid work, and we call on them to phase out antiquated, unsustainable strategies like indoor residual spraying with DDT. I think the big problem with DDT is that it's an old and toxic pesticide, there's no denying it, and that it persists in the environment for a very long time. I think DDT residues can be found in all human beings living in the world today, and because of this, it has been banned for agricultural uses. Around the world, the disease has been effectively controlled using methods that do not rely on DDT. These are systems-based approaches, such as the case of Mexico and the examples from Kenya. The Mexico experience showed that you have to add a community-based organizing as part of a, a surveillance program for prom from prop identification of, of, the, of the malaria patients and, and drug treatment, for cleaning the places, environmental places, and improving the housing and health and sanitation. You have a good uh, treatment strategy for, for the drug to treat the patients, and a good, as a last uh, resource, um, a pesticide who cannot be persistent, that can, uh, that can be used for, just for, as a last resource. There are examples from a number of countries that don't use DDT, but that manage to stabilize and reduce the incidence and deaths linked to malaria. So these are some of the solutions to be studied, to build on, to enact. But it calls for political will at the national and international levels to implement these initiatives. In Kenya, we are able to produce uh, Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis, which is a larvicide. Actually, we are also uh, able to produce pyrethrin-based products, which can now last longer in the environment and equally cheap and affordable. And also the use of bed nets is actually working a lot of wonders now. Kenya, for example, has distributed 8.5 million bed nets to date. And this, has, as I told you, has managed to reduce malaria morbidity and mortality by 40% in children who are under five years of age. The best underlying factor in all this is community participation in all these projects. So we really call on all governments to, to invest, not only in governments, also funders, to invest into non-chemical approaches um, and to support um, scientific studies, but also taking the examples we have in the world and communicate them and help governments to implement these non-chemical approaches in, in their country. I asked the U.S. to invest in public health infrastructure in African countries and to contribute to research of effective means of malaria control, to facilitate greater access to malaria medication and treatment, especially access of the poorest sectors, and finally, to help make communities capable of protecting themselves using simple techniques like bed nets and in implementing programs designed to educate and sensitize the public.